Hello, everyone, and welcome to my presentation, Architecture More Than More, Wireless Plasticity for Massive Heterogeneous Computer Architectures. I'm Sergio Bada, and I will be presenting this on behalf of the whole WePlus European Project Consortium, which is formed by all these people from UPC in Barcelona, AMO, uh, RWTH Aachen, EPFL, IBM, uh, University of Bologna, and University of Ziga. So in the talk today, I'm going to describe a little bit uh, how computers are uh, migrating into heterogeneous systems. Um, then I will try to make the case for wireless communications in this context. And then I will describe how WePlus can go beyond uh, the state of the art in this uh, scenario of wireless communications for heterogeneous architectures. So the road to heterogeneous systems is basically uh, uh, driven by the fact that computers are everywhere, that processors are everywhere, and they dominate our lives being inside our cell phones, our laptops, in the data centers, in drones or embedded any embedded system, in TVs and any other, other appliances at home, or in the connected car. So the aim of many of the manufacturers and, this, and architects and designers is to make uh, processors that are faster, that are more efficient, and that they do it even for heterogeneous worlds. The way to design uh, computer chips nowadays, it's basically two ways. You either do a general purpose uh, CPU, a general purpose chip, which is more or less able to do everything at a reasonable speed and efficiency, or you design an accelerator, which is able to do some tasks very, very, very fast, uh, but some others uh, uh, very, very, very badly. So what people are thinking when trying to, to migrate to heterogeneous systems is to get the best of both worlds, right? To have a system which is able to accelerate some key applications like AI or graphics, and, but at the same time is able to also uh, compute other things very reasonably well. So uh, to have the best of general purpose CPUs and also accelerator chips. So this has driven a lot of innovation in computer architecture these this years, these recent years. And one, one very clear example is what uh, the PULP platform is trying to do at uh, ETH in, in, in Zurich. It's a, an open source platform, uh, open source hardware platform that as you can see right now, they have many different uh, types of risk five cores, many different peripherals, many different interconnects and uh, a suite of uh, accelerators that are uniquely suited to, to a given application. So by the combination of these different cores, these different accelerators and these different analytic and peripherals, they are able to uh, design a wide range of architecture, of heterogeneous architectures that go from very, uh, very simple single core systems for IoT to multi-cluster uh, systems for, for HPC. So the, at the heart of all these uh, uh, heterogeneous systems lies the interconnect. So basically the interconnect is what is uh, transporting all the data that needs to be communicated from one core or one accelerator to another core or another accelerator. And in heterogeneous systems, this is very challenging. So communications are very challenging for different reasons because uh, communications are intense. So when you have multiple uh, processors and uh, accelerators and processors are multicore and so on, uh, the communications are intense, meaning that there's a lot of data to transmit from one place to the other. These communications are system dependent. So depending on the particular mixture of processors and accelerators and depending on your application, you will have uh, some communication demands or, or some others. So that means that it's very hard to design an interconnect which works well for any type of system. And besides that, uh, you have uh, communication needs that are uneven, especially. So some of the components will consume more communication than others. And, and moreover, these communications are dynamic temporally, which means that at some points in the applications, there might be some kind of communication patterns and then some other points, some other communication patterns, which might be very, very, very different. So then the, the interconnect has to be uh, able to cover for all, the, all those changes. So the state of the art in interconnects and in uh, heterogeneous systems is the following. So you can find uh, heterogeneous systems which are integrated into a single large chip or a single large die. That communication is very fast, but within a rigid network and chip. 
And this might be the case of the uh, Samsung processor that is used in Tesla cars, which you see here in the, in the left image, in which you have several different subsystems. There's a GPU, there's neural processing units, there's uh, vanilla CPU, there's some memory, some specialized modules for security or safety, um, some cameras by video encoders and so on. And all of this, which is forms a heterogeneous system has to be interconnected through a network on chip. Of course, this is very high performance because everything is integrated together. The network on chip is, is very fast. And, and since it's designed on purpose for this system, then everything goes very fast. But as you can see, this system lacks generalization because of course, you have a CPU, a GPU, and a, a neural processing unit, and you can have multiple different workloads that work well here. But this is designed having autonomous driving in mind. So when you port it to another system, which requires GPUs, and MPUs, and so on, but it's different in scope, then this system might not be exactly what you need, right? So this generalization is OK, but not as, as high as, as you might have wanted. And the cost is very high because the chips are large and the system, the, the, the non-recurring engineering efforts for this is very large. Uh, uh, so if you want to design a similar system for another application, you will probably need to incur again into this non-recurring engineering costs and, and, and fabricate dice which are very large and that I have fault. So the cost in general is very high. So what uh, especially AMD and others have, have been trying to follow up to that is to have some sort of system which is more perhaps more modular which is perhaps less integrated which uh, allows you to fabricate uh, different uh, kind of a, li a library of different specialized chiplets and then put them together into into an integrated system that's the that's the option that amd is, is pushing nowadays these chiplet based processors which are integrated together within an interposer based system so uh, basically you take a GPU chiplet, a CPU chiplet, uh, specialized memory chiplets, and so on, which have been fabricated uh, independently and in smaller chiplets, which have less are less prone to to fabrication errors, and they put, integrate all of them together within a networking package through this interposer. This networking package is lower than a, net, a network on chip, of course, because you have to go through the interposer, and that adds delay, and and that's complic that complic complicates a bit communication because you have pin limitations and so on. Uh, but uh, at the expense of that, you, you, you have some better generalization. So the, these systems are lower in cost because you can have this kind of array of prefabricated chiplets that you then integrate together. The generalization is better than the other system, but still not as good as we wanted. Because in this case, you if you want to design a system, it's uh, you can have uh, a set of chiplets. I mean, if you, if you put more chiplets than you need for a single application, you might cover a, a wider range of applications. So generation is better than, than the other case. But performance suffers because, because of this communication that needs to go through the through the IO pins of each chiplet and that's that's that adds some penalty latency penalty that that might hurt performance in the, of the whole system. So what Weplash, the Weplash project is aiming for is to have a system that is able to achieve the generalization capabilities of these chiplet-based architectures, but at the same time have high performance, that the performance of, of a more integrated kind of network. And um, in other words, the aim of Weplash is to create the next generation of computing systems that are efficient, fast, and flexible all at the same time. So achieving both the best of uh, CPUs and accelerators in the heterogeneous systems and achieving both the best of uh, integrated uh, systems and more disintegrated chiplet-based systems. So how we're going to do this, we, we will realize this through the development of massively parallel heterogeneous architectures by exploiting one key innovation, which is the plasticity offered by wireless interconnects. So this concept of reconfigurability that wireless can offer, and that's something that we will uh, mention right now. So um, related to this, let me just make the case for wireless interconnects outside, let's say, outside Weblash. Um, the key idea be, be, behind wireless interconnects and whiplash is that the size of the wireless antennas scales inversely proportional to the frequency of wireless transmissions. So as you know, Wi-Fi is going to 60 gigahertz and from five gigahertz to 60 gigahertz and 6G is going to, te to the terahertz band. And that, me that means that each time that you increase one order of magnitude this frequency, the antenna becomes one order of magnitude smaller to the point that at, even at 60 gigahertz, it's already small enough to be integrated within a chip. And these figures here on the right and bottom right 
and they are antennas that are integrated within the within the structure of a chip and you see the the silicon the silicon dioxide and the and the silicon the, the higher layer of the silicon dioxide and you see how they use the metallization layers of, of an existing chip to create an entry point and then the arms of a dipole of an antenna okay so if we go even beyond 60 hertz you can imagine that you can have more than one antenna more than eight more than 16 more than even 64 antennas within a, a system which is a few centimeters uh, long and wide so why not why not using that for communications with the chip and besides the antennas you need transceivers you need the circuits that transmit and receive this information which are generally bulky and high power consumption but as you increase the frequency you also reduce the size of the passives and you increase the speed of the of the components that you're going to use and technology allows you uh, allows you to do that so on chip transceivers are also a reality and actually this is a prototype from 2015 uh, 15, working at 240 gigahertz with a relatively old technology uh, that is able to transmit at 16 gigabits per second and taking less than two millimeters square uh, uh, of chip area including the antenna and this can be integrated even more to make it smaller it consumes 220 millibars, which might be a lot, but considering that we are something like 16 gigabits per second, this is still reasonable and can be improved. So our idea in wireless interconnects and in Wiplas in particular is to integrate on chip antennas into chiplets so that the communication is wireless through the processor package. So this 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 communication, since you are radiating within the package and this information is kind of spreading over the whole uh, package, it's global and it's reconfigurable. And in the end, we never claim that we will replace a wire network, but rather that we will complement it, right? So, and based on this approach, we expect to have moderate cost. So it's gonna be higher cost than a thing that doesn't use wireless because we have to integrate all of this. But uh, at the expense of this higher, uh, a bit higher cost, we have an excellent generalization because you can, you can have different chiplets and then you can have a, an overlay network that and reconfigures depending on the needs of your system at each time. So you can generalize to any application and to any system and very high performance. So the wired network is, is kind of taking the, the big loads and then the wireless network is, is taking those, the responsibilities that need low latency and, and kind of global communication. So the reasons why we think that this is uh, feasible and, and that this might be a good complement for wired communications is that the wireless communication has very low latency. So system-wide, you can have a transmission of 100 bytes, 100 bits, sorry, in let's say five to nine nanos, 10, five to 10 nanoseconds. You bypass pin limitations, you bypass the big latency of having to go through long wires. Uh, the communication is inherently broadcast because you are you are kind of radiating the information all around the package. And that it offers this plasticity. We call it plasticity, but you can also call it system level flexibility. Basically, that you can. Uh, uh, implement multiple channels that reconfigure over time without having to reconfigure the physical infrastructure. That's the idea. The caveats of this technology is that they are less efficient than other technologies. They are a few picotions per bit. Of course, radiating is less efficient than going through a wire, but well, that's something that we have to live with. And the relatively low bandwidth that you can achieve with wireless technology, which is between 10 and 100 gigabits per second. Okay, so with these advantages and these caveats, we, we think we can, we can architect very nice systems and let me just reinforce the concept of plasticity or reconfigurability in, in this case we have a system with, a, with three different modules that they have this whatever communication needs and imagine that now we need to uh, add a new memory module or so and so on and that the wires are not connecting that module to the rest of the system in a wired environment wired only environment you would not be able to connect this module uh, to the system but with wireless if it has an antenna it can connect to the rest of the system so it gets this uh, modularity this plasticity that, that you cannot have with with wireless and moreover if the communication needs change so now instead of 30 gigabits per second you need zero and the other uh, the other chip needs more more gigabits per second then you can reconfigure the wireless network so that it it serves that that communication needs so to really implement this wireless interconnects and this wireless network within a within a computer architecture, of course, you need to cover different layers of, of abstraction from the architecture to the network layer, to the link layer, and to the physical layer. And this picture on the right shows kind of a, a schematic of how the system would look like. You would make modifications to the architecture to make sure that you exploit the benefits of, of wireless. 
at the network layer, you would probably have to replace the network interface with a hybrid network interface, which covers both the wired network and the wireless network. And whenever you enter the wireless network, you need a MAC protocol at the link layer, which decides when to transmit to avoid conflicts with other transmissions. And the physical layer basically transfers, uh, translates the digital data into analog data, which is prepared to be sent through, through the end. So I will just very quickly go through architecture aspects and physical layer aspects to kind of, of uh, finish this case for wireless interconnects. At the architecture level, uh, we did some studies uh, prior to Weplash, which confirmed that wireless can be useful in many core scenarios, not necessarily heterogeneous, not necessarily chiplet based, but that can be ported to these chiplet based heterogeneous systems. We first investigated uh, how wireless co communication could be useful for synchronization, for uh, speeding up locks and barriers within a many core environment. Locks and barriers are latency critical because you want, you want to arrive to the barrier, you want to let everyone know that you arrived to the barrier so that you can go past it. Or if you want to take a lock, you want to take it as soon as possible to avoid places and so on. So in this case, we thought that wireless communications with this broadcast, low latency broadcast will be very useful for synchronization. So we implemented a, a very small uh, broadcast memory that would st store those logs and barriers that would be replicated in all the cores that have this memory so that you could bypass the cache coherence protocol whatsoever. So basically any writes that would go to this memory would be replicated everywhere through the wireless network so that uh, we would make sure that uh, this data is always the same in all, mem in all these uh, small memories and all the reads would be local. So whenever you read if the log is taken or not, you would know in instantaneously without having to, to go through the cache coherence. So by making use of this uh, modification, very small modification that uses the broadcast of, of wireless, and just by having one antenna per core and a wireless network that works at 20 gigabits per second, we, we made a big impact just by modifying a very small part of the code. In now it has like 40% of speed ups uh, over Splice 2 and, and, and Parsec, but in special, uh, Special in some applications like stream cluster, ocean, or ray trace, which are heavy, heavy using, heavily using logs and barriers. Right. The others, what were mostly unaffected because basically they avoid this kind of synchronization because it's expensive in many scenarios. So we thought, okay, maybe if we enable this synchronization to be more effective and and more cost efficient, maybe we can change some of the algorithms to make sure that they run faster thanks to this now uh, these changes. So with this idea, uh, trying to not modify the, the applications, but rather looking at data which would still be low latency without having to be synchronization, we designed Replica in which, uh, yeah, basically it's an extension in which we decided to store other things in, uh, other things than, than synchronization primitives. So data that needs to be accessed very, very fast uh, in all cores, right? And so again, with one antenna per core, wireless channel at 20 gigabits per second, the effort is bigger because the programmer needs to know <clears throat> what to put and, and that there's a limited size of this uh, replicated memory, but the impact is bigger. So the app, we, we obtain an average of 90% speed ups across uh, uh, splash two per second chrono. Um, and and, and, and we, we try to go further. So at the end, uh, last year, uh, this year, we, 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 we asked ourselves, can we have the, rep the benefits of this replica system, but without having to put any extra burden to the programmer? So we, we came up with WIDER, which is a cache coherence protocol, which takes advantage of this fast broadcast to turn uh, heavily shared lines into update base, so that any update to these lines that are shared instead of being invalidated, they will be updated in all the different uh, uh, directories. So this way we would accelerate the updates of that have to be heavily invalidated. So with just one antenna per core and wireless channel 20 gigabits per second, we achieved a more moderate speed up of 30% across all the, all the benchmarks, but no impact on programmability whatsoever. So it, we, we came up with, a, with an architecture which was transparent to the programmer and achieved uh, a good speed up over a wider range of applications than just using synchronization. So these are just three examples of how wireless can impact the, the architecture. In this case, it was a, a single monolithic, single chain monolithic many core, many core processor, but that can be extended to the chiplet. So how all of this is sustained? So as you can see, to 
for this idea to make sense, the, the speed of the wireless network has to be at least 10 gigabits per second. We say 20 is would, would be probably uh, a safer estimate. And that it, it of course it cannot be it cannot be super uh, highly energy consuming. So we put uh, a range of one to 10 picatures per bit as something that would be reasonable. And that the area that these transceivers and the antennas consume shouldn't be that very large. Otherwise, this kills the whole the whole purpose. So a, a, a size of between 0 0.1 and one millimeter squared would be would be ideal. And let me say that the technology is advancing very well in that direction. So you see on the right power consumption as a function of data rate and transceiver area as a function of data rate for many transceivers in the literature. And that you can see which are the boundaries that mark one picture per bit and 100 gigabits per second per millimeter square, which is what would give you the, the, the area that we need, right? And you see that there are points, there are design points and transceivers that are going into that direction, but they were very close to one picture per bit very close to that 100 gigabits per second per millimeter square barrier while working at 20, 30 gigabits per second. So what we claim is that this idea is not only a nice idea, but also realizable in the short term if we use the right transceivers. So now that I explained why I think and why we think that wireless communications can be a very nice actor in the in the many core scenario and the heterogeneous massive many core scenario, let me just talk about the whiplash vision. So in whiplash, we made ourselves a question. So what, what would happen if instead of having 10 gigabits per second, one, 10 picatures per bit and one millimeter square of, of area, what would happen if we would have something closer to 100 gigabits per second, something closer to one picatures per bit and something closer to 0 0.1 millimeter square of, of area taken by the transceivers? What would happen if we push the limits of the wireless communication system? And what if instead of just having something that which is uh, always broadcast and that can only be reconfigured through I transmit, I don't transmit, I just use one one or two frequency channels. What if we will have a system in which we have many channels? So frequency is something that you can change easily and that instead of broadcasting, you can choose if you want to broadcast or if you want to direct the beam or the let's say the wireless transmission to a given direction to avoid interference. So what if we will have uh, this uh, uh, new, new scenario at hand? So this is not just a dream, this is something that might happen. And how? Uh, it might happen thanks to graphene. And that's exactly what Weplus is, is, is pursuing. So we pursue the experimental validation of integrated graphene antennas in the terahertz band as enabler of this vision. And, and why we think that this is an enabler of this vision? Because graphene antennas have a natural operation in the terahertz band, which means more bandwidth than the 60 gigahertz or 100 gigahertz transceivers that we have so far. 10 to 100 smaller uh, antenna, uh, antennas, uh, 10 to 100 smaller than metallic antennas in the same in the same frequency. So let's say that for the same frequency, the graphene antenna can be uh, one order of magnitude smaller. So it would reduce the area of, of, of the wireless system and uniquely tunable. So graphene has some plasmonic properties that give, give them a unique tunability, which means that they can change the frequency of resonance very easily, which is not what you would expect from metallic antennas. Metallic antennas, they have the resonance frequency and that's it. And also that allows you to generate or to design uh, antenna arrays that uh, change the direction of the, of the pin. Something that again, you, it's very hard to do with, with metallic antennas. So now with this vision of graphene, we think that we can uh, achieve all these things. So the objective of, in particular of the WIPAS project is to experimentally validate that assumption that graphene antennas radiate and exist and, and can provide this tunability. That uh, the second objective is to co-integrate graphene with the rest of the circuits of, of the transmitter and receiver. And that's important because graphene is a new technology. So we need to demonstrate that having the graphene of the quality and so on that we need for those antennas can be achievable with an industrial process that is replicable to demonstrate via simulations that the concepts enabling this wireless plasticity are possible with a reasonable overhead. And that's what we do at the communication side. And then demonstrating that we can have a 10X revolution in terms of architecture when applying wireless communications to chiplet-based architectures. And specifically we want to aim for AI applications. So from the architectural perspective, um, we, we, we start from the, let's say, why sync replica and why their uh, uh, proposals that we, we gave in the previous years. 
but in, in the Weplus project, we, we, we will uh, leverage the experience of, of Bologna and EPFL with, uh, with RIS-5 and in particular with the pulp clusters. And we will, in, we will uh, test the integration of, of wireless communications within pulp clusters. And moreover, we want to investigate and explore which will be the impact of having in-memory computing accelerators within those pulp clusters. So IBM is investigating a lot on in-memory computing accelerators and uh, Bologna is uh, trying to see how they can integrate that into, into the pop clusters. And even EPFL is also investigating how they can integrate that into the pipeline of a, of a, more, of a regular processor to accelerate uh, some matrix multiplication or some other op operations. So with this and the in integration of wireless interconnects, we're gonna investigate how we can accelerate uh, basically AI and machine learning workloads by making use of this faster matrix multiplication that the memory computing is giving, plus this plasticity that wireless interconnects are giving you and this higher bandwidth that wireless interconnects can give you, give you between chiplets uh, to establish uh, a framework for the generalization of acceleration of, of machine learning tasks. One very first toy example that we developed at the beginning of the project is, okay, imagine that we have a, 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 a AI accelerator, which is scaled out over a, a few chiplets. This, uh, we call this the Simba approach, which is this Simba paper from NVIDIA that does exactly that. And how would wireless communications be able to accelerate? So we propose to have one transmitter in memory uh, and one receiver in each chiplet. So this way, we can broadcast the, <clears throat> the data that needs to be broadcasted from the memory to all, let's say the scatter data that we need to transmit from the memory to the chiplets in much, much faster than you can do with wired interconnects because going from chiplet to chiplet, at least in Simba, it's 20 nanoseconds. So each hop, it's 20 nanoseconds. And if you want to broadcast, that means that the ones that are farther away would take like probably 100 nanoseconds to obtain that data. Uh, so, Basically, what we aim to do is to use wireless communications for this spreading of the data to reduce the, the latency from 100 nanoseconds to 10, 20, 50 nanoseconds in a way that you can accelerate this scattering. And moreover, uh, depending on how the, 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 how, how the uh, DNN looks like, the data flow that might be, uh, uh, the data flow that might be optimal for that DNN might be different than for other DNNs. So what we, what we propose is to use also the wireless interconnect to adapt the data flow so that we can always have the optimal data flow when, when, when computing that DNN. So with just a wireless bandwidth of 64 gigabit, gigabits per second, as you can see, it's kind of compatible what we, we propose in, in Whiplash. We achieve like something between 2.5 and 4.4x speed ups. That's a lot of a speed up. And since we reduce the execution time, we're consuming 40% less energy. So Let's say that the, the overheads of having a wireless communication system here uh, pay off significantly. So to conclude, uh, my talk today was, was trying to convey the idea that heterogeneous architectures call for versatile solutions at the, at the interconnect level, that wireless communications can respond to those needs with very low latency, system level flexibility, and inherent broadcast capabilities, and that we plus aims to go one step further to that idea of wireless interconnects thanks to uh, the, the idea, the paradigm shifting idea of caraffin antennas, which provide more bandwidth, more plasticity, and less area uh, overhead than regular metallic antennas. So uh, this, is, uh, this work is possible thanks to Weplus, this European project Weplus. Uh, you can find us at, in the web, uh, in Twitter, in LinkedIn, also in ResearchGate. And let me take the opportunity to acknowledge the work of of the whole consortium, we have a very nice uh, team of individuals from all the way from graphene, graphene trackers technology, circuits, all the way up to uh, computer architectures and AI in memory computing. So it's very nice to, to be able to work with them. So this is all from my side, thank you.